I wanna show you a simple shortcut to better paintings. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three things I wish I knew about value and the value of value studies. What is a value study? No, it's not studying so that you can make artwork of more value, though that will be an eventual side effect. A value study or a value sketch is converting the scene or the mental image or a photograph that we want to paint or draw down to its values minus color like a black and white photo then combining those tones the lights the midtones and the darks into usually three values just those three one light one midtone and one dark and you eliminate most of the details so that what you're seeing now is the main shapes grouped together as masses or big shapes whether you're painting in plein air or you're working from a photo that you've taken and you're just so excited with the details of the scene and you just think it's amazing and you just want to skip right to painting. I so totally get it. But save yourself years of frustrating paintings by learning this design and composition tool. Start doing this now. Don't wait a few years down the road to pay attention to this essential practice. When I first started doing value studies a few years ago, I was using grayscale markers, but recently I wanted to try the toned paper with only a white charcoal for the light and a 2B or something similar for the darks. I'm really enjoying this Strathmore gray toned sketchbook. It's the five and a half by eight and a half and I have made two rectangles on each side of each sheet and there are three and a half by five inches. That's the aspect ratio, exactly half the size, that I like to use when I'm painting plein air. I usually paint on a seven by 10 arches block. Turns out I couldn't narrow it down to just three, so I've added in a bonus tip, and it's the one that ties it all together. So follow along and don't miss that final step. The first thing I wish I knew as a beginner artist about value is that value is seen and understood by our eyes and brain before color. There's a saying that in our artwork, value does all the work and color gets all the glory. When we're viewing art, we tend to think that what we're appreciating is the color and the color harmonies, but the thing that would initially have drawn us to that painting or artwork is the underlying value structures and design. So the way that we can do this is by squinting our eyes down and actually looking right through our eyelashes, kind of like a filter on a camera lens. And that eliminates the color. Try that right now, wherever you are, look across the room or down the street and squint your eyes until you can't see any color at all and you only see patterns of light and dark. So that's what you're recording in a value study. The second thing I wish I knew about value when I was just starting out was that while we might be drawn to the details of a scene and really wanna paint it, dealing with the bigger shapes of our composition is what is going to make our painting a success or not. This is also called abstraction, and don't get me wrong, this is not about painting abstract paintings, though this does apply there too. But for the purpose of this exercise, eliminating details so that you can see if your composition has a good foundation, it's so much easier to notice the flaws, lack of balance, those type of things in our composition when the colors and details are subtracted. Third, the important thing with values and value study is to learn how to simplify our values and group them together. It's not really just enough to eliminate the color and the detail, but when we can learn to combine the values that are close to each other, we can merge them into bigger shapes and it helps us to see potential for lost edges and then also to see our composition and design as larger sections of the picture plane and to see how those sections work together and interplay how we can connect the shapes. It forces you to see what really matters and what is essential. This really helps you to see how the shapes relate to each other. With practice, you can train your brain to see this way. Before I start telling you about my fourth and final tip on value, let's review. Number one, we see and register value before color. And number two, we also see value before details. And three, we simplify and combine our values and that helps us to really see our compositions. And the fourth thing that ties this all together that is just so important is taking this final step in asking yourself as you're evaluating your value studies and sketches, what serves the painting and makes a better composition? What makes for a better mood and better leading lines? Does altering the shadow help a bit? 
Whether you're working from plain air or from a photo, it is so important to learn that you are the composer of your painting. After blocking in the big shapes, I can see that a small accent of light value would be really nice in front of this dark mass of trees. So I decide to add in this deadfall tree, which has lost all its bark and is bleached by the sun, but I don't want it leading your eye out of the composition. So I draw it in leaning the other direction. As an artist, you are an interpreter of the things you see and the way you see it in a way that effectively communicates your intent, the big idea that made you want to paint this anyway. And learning to leave out the rest makes for so much stronger designs. So now what? In my next video, I'm gonna show you how I take all of this information that I've gathered in these value studies and how I make a more refined studio painting. See you there.